Okay, use logarithmic differentiation to find dy dx. So here we are in AP Calculus AB. There's a couple questions here, and the first question might be, how do you know that when to use ln? And that's really a question for a different video, but maybe you can see the pattern. So let's kind of take a look. What I am going to do is I'm going to use these rules of uh, equality that are found in algebra. And one of the rules says that if we take ln of one side, if we take a log of one side and we take the log of the other side of the equation, our equation remains in balance. So I'm going to take, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to say, I'm going to take ln of y, I'm going to take ln of the left side, and I'm going to take ln of the right side also. I'm going to take ln of x. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to rewrite this square root of x squared plus 1 can be rewritten as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? So right now, I'm not differentiating at all right now. <clears throat> I'm just getting this into a form, into what is a more differentiable form. So here we go. I'm going to expand this using the rules of logarithms. And I know that this is multiplication. And when we have multiplication, we can use addition. So we can take ln of this x right here. This multiplication sign gives us plus ln of this x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power. Remember that we had ln of y, ln of y on the other side. All right. There's also this rule, this property of logarithms that says that we can take this exponential value and roll this back here and use it as a coefficient value instead. So I'm going to use this as a coefficient value. I'm going to just move my plus sign over so you can make room for this 1 half. So there's my 1 half, and this goes away. All right. <clears throat> now we have this in a form that, this is not differentiated, but we have it in a form that can be differentiated. So I'm going to go ahead and start differentiating this. So I'm going to take the derivative of the left side. Well, the first derivative of ln of y is 1 over y, right, times the derivative of y, and the derivative of y is dy dx, right? This should look familiar uh, like the chain rule, hopefully. We know that the first derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. We have that memorized. We have this constant multiple here of 1 half, so we have 1 half, and the first derivative of ln of x squared plus 1 is 1 over x squared plus 1, 1 over the function, right, times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative, <laughs> excuse me, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x, isn't it? So hopefully you can see all that. This 2 and this 2 cancel each other out, right? x times 1 is x, so we have we have this, don't we? I am intentionally ignoring the left-hand side right this second. I'm going to get back to it, but I'm ignoring it right now intentionally. I need to combine these two pieces, so I'm going to multiply this side by x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 to get common denominators, which will give me x squared, excuse me, which will give me, yeah, will give me x squared plus 1. Plus, on this side, I'm going to multiply this side by x over x, so this is x times x is x squared. And then I'm going to multiply these together and get x times x squared plus 1. Right? Remember, we still have this mess on the left-hand side that we haven't dealt with yet, which is 1 over y dy dx. Right? Y dx. So just going to keep working my way through this a little bit. Going to clean up this algebra. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. So I'm going to take that, and 2x squared plus 1 is 2x squared plus 1. So 2x squared plus 1. This is me just cleaning up my algebra a little bit. Now what I'm going to do, it's going to be a little bit weird. The first part of it I think you'll get. Remember, we want to get dy dx by itself because that's our job is to find dy dx. And we have this 1 over y. So we're going to multiply both sides by y. And if I multiply 1 over y by y, we get y over y, which is 1. And 1 times dy dx is dy dx. And then, of course, this whole side multiplied by y, and we have 2x plus 1, 2x squared plus 1 over x times x squared plus 1, right? Now, <clears throat> hopefully, if you're still with me on this, that's terrific. And I know the algebra kind of starts to throw everybody off a little bit, but now what I want to do is remind you of something. So I want you to take a quick look at this. We have this value of y right here, and we know how we got it. We multiplied both sides by y over 1 to get that here, to get rid of this. So this y, what I want to tell you now is that this y, you guys, is this y. And it says clearly that y is equal to x 
times the square root of x plus 1. So that's where I'm going with this. That's my intention, is that I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this replacement value here. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to rewrite this. dy dx, we're almost there, dy dx is equal to, then I'm going to put in my y value, and remember when we went up to the top, we saw that y was equal to x times the square root of x squared plus 1. If you don't mind, I'm going to put it to the 1 half power. It's the same thing, isn't it? And then I'm going to, that's my y piece, and I'm going to put everything else back the way it was, which was 2x squared plus 1 over x times x squared plus 1. Take a look at this just for a second, because I want to see how, show you how I'm simplifying this. This piece right here, I'm not going to multiply this in. This piece right here, x squared plus 1, is the same as x squared plus 1 to the first power, isn't it? But if you look up here, this exponent is in the form of halves. So I can rewrite this and put this in two halves, isn't it? Now I'm just going to use cross, not cross multiply, cross canceling. x over x is 1, so they cancel out, right? And then we'd have x squared plus 1. I'm just taking this orange piece right here to the 1 half over this one, x squared plus 1 to the 2 halves, which would give us, I can't believe I'm doing all this, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half minus 2 halves, which is negative 1 half, isn't it? So our final answer for dy dx is that dy dx would be equivalent to 2x squared plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. All right? These are those problems. You've got to do a bunch of them. But, but once you do them, it gets pretty easy. So I hope this video was really helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, and your comments are always welcome. And I try to respond to people as quickly as possible. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.